Thanks, everybody. Um, I'm Dale Chihuly. I uh, was born in Tacoma, Washington in 1941. Um, my father was a union organizer for the butchers, and uh, my mother was a housewife who took care of a beautiful garden. Um, I wasn't, uh, I was sort of a kind of a punk when I was a teenager. Uh, I wasn't a very good student. Um, unfortunately, my only sibling, my brother George, uh, died in a Navy plane crash when I was 15, and my father died the next year. Uh, neither one of my parents had gone to college, and, and I didn't want to go to college. Uh, my mother almost begged me to go to college, and she hardly ever asked much of me, so I decided I would, I would do, do that for her. I went to local college, the University of Puget Sound in Tacoma. Um, I, again, I wasn't a very good student, but um, that year I decorated my mother's basement kind of into a den, coffee house uh, feeling, and, and I thought I had done a fabulous job. So I decided that I would um, transfer to the University of Washington and, and study interior design and, and architecture. And I, unfortunately, I joined a fraternity, uh, <laughs> sort of continued my bad ways, and um, didn't do very well for the first half of college. And I knew I wasn't doing very well. Uh, I was just sort of limping along. Uh, so I decided I was wasting my money, and I, I, I quit, and I went to Europe for a year, uh, ending up uh, working on a kibbutz in Israel. And it was a, oh, a, a life-changing experience, I would say. And when I returned to school, uh, I made a complete 180 and became a very good student. And um, around that time, I was doing some weaving and my first use of glass was weaving bits of glass into a tapestry that would then hang in the window. And uh, in order to make it so that the glass wouldn't cut the yarn, I got a little oven, a kiln, and I was able to heat up the glass and, so that the edges would be softened. And I could fuse the glass in different ways. And, um, as the tapestries uh, increased uh, in size, they increased in the amount of glass. And uh, it got to the point where there was more glass than, than yarn. And uh, I also started making little glass sculptures. Uh, and uh, this was all taking place in a, in a basement studio that a friend of the family let me have. Um, when I graduated, I went to work as a designer for a large architectural firm in Seattle, same one that did the Space Needle. And um, it was about that time that I, I, I melted some stained glass between four bricks in this little oven. And I took a piece of pipe, not a regular blowpipe, but just a piece of iron gas pipe. And uh, I don't know how I knew that you, you really have to heat the pipe up before the glass will stick to it. And somehow I managed to do that. Uh, I'd never seen glass blowing before. There was a photograph of a glass blower on my wall, I remember, so I knew about glass blowing. And I gathered up that glass and, uh, and blew a bubble. And that was, I only did it once. And that was, um, uh, from that point on, I wanted to be a glass blower. And uh, as Jerry mentioned, the University of Wisconsin had just started uh, a graduate glass blowing program. So I applied there and uh, I quit my job as a designer. I went to Alaska and became a commercial fisherman in order to earn money to go to graduate school, which I did. Uh, but after the first year, I went to the Rhode Island School of Design, not, not to work with glass so much, but to, just to be at that great, great institution. And, the next year, I went to Venice, uh, to the island of Murano, and, and worked in the great Venini factory uh, for most of that year. And uh, I got a letter while I was there asking if I would like to start a glass department at the Rhode Island School of Design, 
which I accepted, and um, worked there for about 10 years. Then uh, it was around 1980 that um, the sales of my glass, I had started to, to sell in some galleries, and the sales of my glass were $18,000 that year, and that was the same amount that my salary was for being a professor. <laughs> so I thought I'd maybe quit teaching <laughs> and uh, go back to Seattle. And you saw that, that little slide of us standing in front of that beautiful tree. Uh, the Pilchuck Glass School, myself and some friends started in 1971. So when I came back to Seattle, I couldn't afford to build my own glass shop. Uh, glass shops tend to be rather expensive, and especially if you're working with a team. And while I was in Venice, I got to really experience how the teamwork happens in, a, in a working with glass. Most of the Americans at this point were working by themselves, and it's much more difficult to, to work with glass by yourself. Um, by about 1985, I could afford to uh, buy a little building and have a glass shop, and probably had about 10 people working with me. And um, now I have a, you know, two or three buildings in Seattle and Tacoma, and there are about 90 people that work with me. And I've selected uh, about five little videos to show you tonight, um, showing different projects. The first one is a project called Chihuly over Venice, where we went to um, several countries and made glass, mostly chandeliers, but other, other parts, other types of glass as well. And then we shipped everything back to Seattle and built it, all the, all the sculptures and chandeliers and sent them over to Venice. So the first video will be from Nutiarvi, Finland, uh, a wonderful little factory that was 200 years old, about two hours north of Helsinki. And I brought a large team of glass blowers with me and other people to help us build chandeliers in the woods. And we worked hand in hand with the, with the glass blowers from the factory in each, in each country. It was a great experience and one of my favorite projects. Peter, can you roll that um, Nuti RV Finland? We're going to five countries. First All right. Was that was it loud enough? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I, I forgot to tell you that. Um, I could take a couple of questions if you wanted in between s uh, these videos. So the next one is going to be uh, Venice itself when we took about 14 chandeliers uh, to Venice. I was noticing in this last one at Finland, you remember when the guy was carrying the really long piece into the oven? Well, uh, after a piece of glass is made, it has to go into an annealing oven and be cooled down slowly, usually overnight, sometimes longer. Uh, the thicker the glass is, the longer it has to be annealed. And uh, I don't have ovens that are nearly as big as they do in a factory, so I took advantage of that. And one of the, the last piece in the show here is uh, some reeds coming out of birch logs. They show, yeah, we showed a slide of that, didn't Jerry? Yeah. And so those were made in Finland, uh, not back then, which was 15 years ago, but uh, we've returned to Finland on occasion uh, to make pieces that won't fit uh, into my ovens. So again, the next segment is, is Venice. And if you have any questions uh, after that, I'll, I could take a couple of questions. You got a question? Yeah. Can we see any of the early weaves that you did with glass anywhere? The weavings, is that what you said? Yeah. Uh, no, um, <laughs> I don't think so. I, I, own a, I own a few of them, and um, I don't know, it was so long ago, I don't know what the, the ones that were probably sold, I, I don't even know who owns them. 
I took, my mother died recently, and I had the largest piece in her dining room window, and I, I took it down, we sold the house. Uh, but it's in such poor condition, uh, the yarn after being in, being in the sunlight for 40 years or whatever, uh, a lot of the yarn is deteriorating. In fact, I was with the, the great fabric artist, uh, Jack Lenore Lawson, uh, today for lunch. And um, I've known Jack since I was a student, and he was a student at the University of Washington in interior design as well. And I asked Jack if I could restore that weaving, because it was my favorite piece of that time. And because I thought we'd reweave it. Uh, and he said, no, if you reweave it, then it's really not yours anymore. He says, but what they can do is back it with another type of fabric somehow. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. All right, next one.